Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and I have here an Amazon Kindle Fire, which is a 7-inch Android tablet that comes with a custom version of Google Android designed by Amazon. But it is now possible to get it to run a full version of Android based on CyanogenMod, which is a custom Android software distribution based on the Android open source project. And almost everything works fine. It um, Wireless is good, it seems relatively fast and responsive, um, you have access to all the widgets and other settings, and the one thing that is currently not working is uh, audio. So you can't actually use audio with this right now, but you can do pretty much everything else. So, for instance, we can open up different applications. Um, it doesn't come with the Google Android Market pre-installed, but you can load it and it runs just fine. Uh, you have to make a couple of modifications to get that working properly, and you can find instructions on how to do that at lilliputing.com. Uh, it's basically the same process that you would use for installing the Android Market on um, the uh, Amazon Kindle Fire without rooting, or when you root it, but you don't uh, install the custom ROM. Um, for some reason it's having a little issue loading properly here. Okay, so everything is working properly. Almost. Um, you can enable or disable screen rotation, enable airplane mode, make settings like that. Um, let's, uh, let's try with the Android market searching for an application instead of opening up that view. So we're searching for Dolphin Browser. Uh, we're getting a forced close. Um, I've read that uh, some people have actually had uh, issues with the Android Market. Installing a newer version of the Market should fix that. Uh, I just still need to download that. But you can also install the official Amazon App Store. And what's interesting here is that you can install a version uh, that's a little bit different from the version that's available for the Kindle Fire out of the box. It's going to have applications that you can't find in the um, normal Kindle Fire version. So for instance, if we search for launchers, you'll see that there's a number of different application launchers here. Uh, most of these are not present if you search for them on the default version of the Android market that comes with the Kindle Fire. Now that said, I tried installing the Amazon Kindle app that comes with the uh, Fire, and it just does not load. And this is the version of the Kindle app which is supposed to be able to access your personal documents and other settings um, that are not available in the generic version of the, uh, well, the more general version of the Kindle app for Android. It just doesn't run. Um, so if you wanted to install the Kindle app, you would have to install the same version that's available for other Android devices by uh, searching for it and installing it. Um, but that is something that you can do just as easily. So overall, uh, fairly fast, fairly responsive. Um, the Android market, you need to make sure that you have the latest version if you want it to work. But wireless works. Uh, the tablet is almost fully functional uh, running Cyanogen Mod, and it feels much more like a typical Android tablet. Uh, with customizable home screen launchers uh, and other settings, and it feels uh, fairly fast and responsive overall. So the experience of using it with Signage and Mod is pretty good so far. That said, if you want to be able to go back to your stock version of uh, the Kindle Fire software, there is a tool for doing that. You can find information on that as well at lilliputing.com, and I'll uh, try to post some pictures and instructions of that process. Um, if you need to get your audio working again, or for some other reason you want to go back to the stock system, um, if you plan to return this or, or make some other sort of changes. Um, so it's a pretty versatile little device. It's got a 7-inch uh, 1024 by 600 pixel display, a 1 gigahertz uh, Texas Instruments OMAP4 processor, 8 gigabytes of storage. There is no SD card slot, um, so it's only got the 8 gigabytes built in memory, and there's only one button, which is this little power button here, and that makes installing Cyanogen Mod a little trickier on this device than others, but um, Jackpot Clavin at the XDA Developers Forum has modified uh, some of the tools that are usually used to install Signage and Mod and made it possible to install it and also to restore to the, um, the stock system. There's no way to back up all of your files and settings, so um, if you do install Signage and Mod, you're going to have to wipe your device first and um, 
Um, so if you decide that you want to go back to the typical Amazon software, uh, you're going to have to restore from the Amazon App Store and, and so forth. Um, you can download any app that you've purchased or downloaded for free from Amazon uh, pretty easily, but some of your settings and other documents might be missing if you decide to install CyanogenMod Mod and then go back. So you might want to hold off on doing this until things are a little bit more stable, until, for instance, sound is working, if you think you might be going back. Um, but if you really just want a more standard Android experience, it's possible to get that. This is Brad Linder with CyanogenMod Mod 7, uh, based on Google Android 2.3 Gingerbread, running on the Amazon Kindle Fire. Uh, soon there should also be a version of Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich available for the tablet, but right now we're looking at Android 2.3 which uh, offers a little bit more flexibility than the software that Amazon ships with the Kindle Fire.